So in our previous video, we discussed that, yeah, we have this great looking page. Well, it's sort of starting to look okay. But I really, how do I get to my other pages? I can get to my post because this is multi-post, so I can scroll down here and I go to my different posts, but I can't go to my different pages because the pages are not set up here to appear by default. So here's what I need to do. I need to create a navigation system. So the simplest way to do that based on these choices is I go under, well, actually, if I'm in the front end, I can go right here and I go right to menus. So if in the back end, it's under appearance and it's under menus, but from the front end in ultimatum, you can go right to menus and that's what we're going to do. Now it's telling you that we don't have any menus. It says edit or create a new menu. Well, what do we want to call this menu? We'll keep it really simple and we'll call it main menu. And you might say, why would I do that? Because you can have different menus. You could have category menus. You can have uh, client login menus. You can have footer menus. You can have sidebar menus. You can have all different types of menus. We're just going to create a simple, straightforward menu. Now, this is part of WordPress, technically. This backend stuff is WordPress. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to select all of these pages. There's all of our pages here. And we're going to add them to our menu. Now, when I added that to the menu, notice over here, and this was created from the WP example in a previous video. Notice that I have child and grandchild, but that's not going to appear automatically that way in your menu. We have to do a little bit of tweaking here. So what we will do under the image page three, we're going to drag this slightly to the right so that becomes a child, and then we're going to drag that to the right, and that will become a grandchild. So this will be a menu, submenu, and submenu from there. Now, what we can do for future building, first of all, we can make this part of our ultimatum default menu, and we can add any new pages automatically to the menu. Now, this is a total personal preference whether you want to do that or not, but it's not going to automatically just put things in place unless you drag and drop them and put them where you want. And you can do that very simply by, let's say I want this, let's say I want my page one to appear first. Well, how would I get page one to appear first? I drag it up here, followed by page two, followed by page three. Let's drag that to the top. Now, I don't want to make that a sub menu. I just want to drag that to the left. So I save my menu. Okay. So now if I go to view my site, you will see I now have really nice looking links, not to be confused with really nice looking sausages. Sausages, he's got a million of them. All right, so this is a sub menu here. So if I click sub menu, there's my child and there's my grandfather page. Simple as pie. Now, this is set up by default using Bootstrap inversion. inversion. Now you're saying Bootstrap inversion, what is this guy talking about? Let me share with you this information is coming from. So how do I get into my layout? Based on these choices, edit layout. Then based on these choices, keep in mind that that was part of my header. So we haven't talked about this yet. We're going to go to Edit Layout, and that's where my ultimate menu is kept. And the ultimate menu has all different types of built-in menus. This is the Bootstrap menu. I can have an ultimate menu. I can have a mobile menu. I can have a side menu. So this is something we'll talk about a little in subsequent videos. But again, this is something you want to spend time in your practice with. Now, this is a black ultimate menu inversion. So as an example, if I go back to my site, you'll see that it's black and white, white text on black. In the printing world, that's known as knockout type, as an example. So I'm going to go back and make this, uh, it's the bootstrap menu, but I don't want this to be inverted. I want to make this default, and I come down here and I hit save. I come up here and save the layout. Now, since I already have a front end of this, I can just hit the refresh page. And to me, that doesn't look as, as hip. Okay, I kind of like the inversion, so I'm going to go back here. I'm going to change that back to inverse, which is the opposite. Come down here, save the changes. Save the layout. And refresh the page. Okay, so we've learned so far how to create and edit an existing layout, and more importantly, not to reinvent the wheel, how to clone an existing layout and then just change the content on that layout. 
So let's put this in the practical use. If I select page one, it's going to take us to the page with slider one on it. And it's going to take us to that page, which was block quote. And if I pick page two, it's going to pick the one with default slider two on it. And if I pick page three, it's going to pick my default uh, slider. But in this particular case, this is a default menu. So that's this is this is not going to initiate page three. It's going to take us. It's going to basically go here. Does that make sense? Because that's a sub menu. So here is one, two. And again, that was set up. Let's just examine this. Now, here is a really cool part of the ultimatum experience. I'm going to click here. Now, because, because I'm using that particular layout, I really want you to put your thinking caps on for this. This will really help your understanding. What layout is this using, this page using? Let's say, well, I don't know. I forgot. Well, here's a really cool part. If I go to edit layout, it's going to show me that I'm using the full layout, but I don't actually have to go there. What I can also do is go to edit page and that will show me I'm using my default layout, which was the full width layout, as I explained to you earlier. So what's really cool about this, if I select header page two and I go back to edit layout, it knows that it's in layout two. It knows to do that. It's really cool. It's going to keep you out of trouble. And if I go to edit page, it tells me, oh, this is going to layout two which at this point under edit page, I can choose and say, hey, I want to go to three. I want to go to my full width. I want to go to the default. We're going to do neither of those things, but I'm just sharing with you a very simple way to navigate around. So let's say your multiple page layout is going to this. Well, I don't want it to do that. In fact, I don't want to see the slider on any of the pages that have to do with multiple page. So how can I fix that? Well, what I would need to do is go back to edit layout, go back to layout screen, and we're going to clone this layout, and we're going to call it something very simple. Okay, we're going to call it no slider. Now, no slider is literally going to have no slider, which means I'm going to take this information and I'm going to delete the entire row because I don't need the row because there's no slider. So I'm going to delete the entire row, hit save layout, and back to layout. Well, in this particular case, I'm going to go here. Here's, here's the original menu we had before. I'm going to close that window. Okay. So all I have to do to assign that particular multiple page to that particular layout is go back to visit site, click the multiple page paragraph page, and again, based on these choices, I don't want to see the slideshow for this page. Okay. Now again, just a few seconds ago, we created a new layout that does not have a slider. So I can simply go to edit page and based on these choices, no slider. How cool is that? Update. Now, if I want to be really lazy here, I just want to see the page. So I simply hit preview changes and there is the page with no slider. Pretty cool stuff. I think that's really cool. Now, in the next video, I'm going to share with you how to do a simple default layout with multiple columns, so stay tuned.